If you're currently looking to pick up one of Razer's flagship wireless gaming headsets, but not sure which product families to choose from, then I hope today's video will serve as a helpful guide for you in choosing the right one. Hi, what's up everybody? I'm Edward. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the differences between Razer's current lineup of flagship wireless headsets available as of Q4 2022, which includes the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, Razer Barracuda Pro, Razer Kraken V3 Pro, Razer Kyber Pro, and the Hammerhead True Wireless Pros. And even though they all use the same titanium coated drivers and are all great for gaming, having used all of them, I can tell you that depending on your audio preferences and the majority of genre of games that you play, one will definitely sound better than the other. And because sound is very subjective, where each of us will have a different preferences in our games, how our games should sound like, I will also be pointing out where and how each headset stand out from each other so you can decide that if it's something that you prefer. So, Hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and let's see which headset is most suitable for you. A uh, quick note before we start, I want to point out that as with all reviews, please keep in mind to take everything with a grain of salt as I'm just someone who loves immersive gaming experiences and listening to music, but I'm no audiophile and don't have any professional audio testing equipment other than my ears. So my opinions today and recommendation could be a hit or miss for you. Also, if you would like to learn more about a particular headset, I will leave links to my full detailed review videos in the description below. All right, with that out of the way, let's start with the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. Launched back in late 2020, the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro weighs in at 320 grams, making it the lightest over-ear headset of today's bunch. The oval-shaped ear cuffs make it suitable for longer ears without causing pressure points on the earlobes, and it is padded with breathable fabric and memory foam, which helps when using with glasses and also not trapping too much heat for extended use. Though, as one of the older models, it also has the shortest battery life at about 24 hours and charges with a micro USB cable, while the other flagships have already moved on to USB-C. As for device connectivity, the Black Shark V2 Pro works wirelessly with your PC, PS4, and PS5, and the Nintendo Switch in docked mode only. For other devices such as your mobile phone or Xbox, you can use it in wired mode via the 3.5mm jack on the left ear cup. Now, for the sound signature of the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, it has the punchiest and boomiest bass compared to all the other categories of Razer gaming headsets. The default sound profile has a boosted bass and treble with slightly neutral mids, making this headset suitable for gamers who love action-packed games. Explosions and low rumbles are more emphasized than fuller compared to the other headsets here. And the boosted low mids and trebles helps with bringing out the details and clarity of sounds such as footsteps, bullets flying, and distant gunshots. This is also what makes this headset stand out among the other flagship headsets when used together with a virtual surround sound software such as Razer's THX Spatial Audio, Dolby Atmos for headphones, or DTSX Ultra. When used together with virtual surround software, the Black Shark V2 Pro's positional audio is, to my ears, the most accurate in terms of sound imaging or 3D position audio compared to other headsets today straight out of the box. You can easily locate where gunshots and footsteps are coming from, which is also why I would recommend this headset if you mostly play competitive games that rely on audio cues to gain a competitive advantage. Though, so because of the boomy bass and the slightly narrow soundstage, when things get hectic on screens with many things going on at once, sound tends to get uh, muddy and drowned out by the overwhelming bass. Now, if the pilot aesthetics and the lack of RGB on the Black Shark V2 Pro is not right for you, then let's take a look at the Kraken V3 Pro. Released in 2022, the Razer Kraken V3 Pro is the heaviest flagship wireless gaming headset at 372 grams. Even though it's the heaviest headset here, the comfort level during extended use sessions is on par with the Black Shark V2 Pro thanks to its comfortable ear pads. The only drawback would be the leather part of the headband that will eventually be prone to cracking and peeling from being leathered, and especially if you have oily hair. The battery life of the Kraken V3 Pro can last up to 44 hours with RGB and haptics off, but if you turn both on, it will only last around 11 hours with continuous usage. As for device connectivity, like the Black Shark V2 Pro, Razer's Kraken V3 Pro can connect wirelessly with your PC, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo Switch in docked mode only. For other devices such as your mobile phone or Xbox, you can use it in wired mode via the 3.5mm jack on the left ear cup. 
As for the sound signature of the Kraken V3 Pro, it sounds very similar to the Black Shark V2 Pro, but with slightly more tank trebles and a slightly wider sound stage. It still packs a good punch in its bass response, but it is not as powerful as the Black Shark V2 Pro. However, it can be compensated by turning on the built-in haptic feedback, which gives explosions and gunshots that extra rumble that you can literally feel. And with the inclusion of this feature, it is also what makes the Kraken V3 Pro one of the more fun, more immersive headsets to use for games and content consumption if you are into haptic feedback. However, with the haptic feedback on medium and high, I find that in FPS titles, the haptic feedback vibrations kind of interferes with the sound imaging or directional audio, making it not as accurate and as clear as it would be on the Black Shark V2 Pro. I mean, with haptics off, you can easily tell which direction the sound is coming from, but the Black Shark V2 Pro can do it be with better accuracy and clarity. However, when it comes to open world and action and adventure games, and games with beautiful soundtrack, I find the Kraken V3 Pro more capable in delivering more clear environmental sounds such as the sound of the wind, grass, and water, and a better sounding soundtrack because of the slightly less, less boomy bass and the wider soundstage, which in turn also adds more towards the gaming immersion. And because the Kraken V3 Pro can only be customized by Synapse, I recommend choosing this headset if you mainly game on the PC. Now, also released in 2022, the Razer Kyra Pro for a PS5 and Xbox is a tiny bit lighter than the Kraken V3 Pro at 365 grams, but are also extremely comfortable thanks to the ear cup paddings. Designed mainly for console gamers in mind, this family of a headset can also be used with the PC but lacks any customizability when doing so. The only way to do so is via switching over to Bluetooth mode and then using Razer's mobile audio app to customize the headset and then switching back to the 2.4GHz connection. Therefore, if you mainly game on a PC, then the Black Shark and the Kraken will be a more convenient choice. The battery life of the Kyra Pro averages to around 20 hours with haptics and RGB on and 50 hours when you turn both of them off. In terms of device connectivity, the Kyra Pro has both 2.4GHz and Bluetooth 5.0 for connecting wirelessly to a large range of devices, making this one of the more versatile headsets in today's video. It also comes with Razer's Smart Switch feature that allows you to connect to your phone or PC to answer calls via Bluetooth while staying connected over the 2.4GHz bandwidth, but it can only output one audio source at a time. And because of the way this headset is tuned, I feel like the Kyra Pro's sound signature, in my opinion, is only great for gaming and movies as it delivers powerful explosions with rumbles and clear vocals. It is only if you have the patience to slowly tune the Kyra Pro or switching it over to the Amplify EQ preset mode where it will begin to sound good for music. But if only used for gaming, the added haptic feedback function adds an extra level of immersion to your games like on the Kraken V3 Pro, and with the addition of the gaming devices that support Bluetooth and USB-C connections. And I also want to point out something that I noticed with these Razer headsets here, is that the Kyra Pro for the PlayStation 5 seems to have the best sound imaging and soundstage when used together with the PlayStation 5 with 3D audio enabled. The clarity of environmental details somehow seem to be clearer and the soundstage becomes wider when used with the PS5 compared to when using the Kyra Pro with other platforms. For example, I find myself able to hear the direction of enemies behind me with better clarity in Returnal with the Kyra Pros than when I could with the other headsets. But maybe it's just me, as I haven't really had the time to test it with many different games yet. So let me know in the comments if you also experienced this and already own the Razer Kyra Pro. Now for Razer's latest addition to their flagship lineup, headsets lineup, the Barracuda Pro is the only flagship headset today that uses Razer's newest 50mm Triforce Biocellulose drivers and also is the most expensive of the bunch. Designed to be the headset that can be used both for at the home gaming and as an everyday on-the-go headset, the Barracuda Pro is the only over-ear headset in today's video that also comes with active noise cancellation for when you're on the go. Weighing at only 340 grams and padded with this super plush but thin leatherette, it is also the most comfortable to wear for extended periods, though it is also unavoidable that it will eventually crack and peel. It also comes with the longest battery life of 40 hours with ANC on and about 54 hours with ANC off. As for the connectivity options, the Barracuda Pro can only be used wirelessly via the 2.4GHz and Bluetooth but works with the PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch in both docked and undocked mode, and mobile devices. There is no 3.5mm jack on it and also no boom mic on it so the mic quality suffers a bit on the Barracuda Pro when in a noisy environment. 
But the good news is the Barracuda Pro can be customized both via Synapse on your computer and the mobile app, making it suitable for both PC and mobile use. And like the Kyra Pro, it also has Razer Smart Switch feature that allows you to answer calls without needing to remove the headset while you're gaming. When it comes to how the Razer Barracuda Pro sounds, the default sound signature is leaning more towards a neutral sound with a little bit of boosted bass and boosted mids. In terms of gaming, it still has that extra bass to give you that thump and boomy feel and still make footsteps sound loud and clear. But with a little EQ tuning and used together with a virtual surround software, the Barracuda Pro can become the headset with the best sound imaging and sound stage among all the headsets in today's video thanks to the driver responding very well to tuning. In games where there are many things going on on the screen at the same time, the Barracuda Pro also outperforms the Black Shark V2 Pro and the Kraken V3 Pro. Overall, the Barracuda Pro sounds great for a vast genre of games, but may be considered a bit lacking in boomy bass for those who prefer fuller and louder explosions. But because of the slightly less overwhelming bass, music also doesn't sound muddy on the Barracuda Pro, making it great for everyday use. For this last flat Razer's flagship audio device, the Hammerhead True Wireless Pro is launched in late 2020 and is designed mainly for gamers on the go. Weighing at only 53 grams and having a small form factor, it is easy to bring along with you for your mobile gaming and audio needs. It also has a good battery life of 20 hours with ANC on. And being a earbud form factor, it only has Bluetooth connectivity and a low latency gaming mode connection over Bluetooth and can be customized and tuned via Razer's mobile app. As for the sound signature of the Hammerhead True Wireless Pro, they have a very boosted bass and can sound muddy without any EQ tuning. However, when used with the onboard THX EQ profile, they have a more typical V-shaped sound profile making these earbuds sound really good for mobile gaming, music, and movies. It also comes with an OK OK noise, active noise cancellation to filter out some unwanted ambient noises, but being an in-ear design, it doesn't have the best spatial audio compared to Razer's other full-size headsets. Okay, now that we've gone over all of Razer's flagship headsets, for my preferences, I find myself using the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro most of the time when gaming on my PC due to their great audio imaging and the powerful bass, while occasionally switching over to the Cairo Pro when I want a head massage. But with the recent addition of the Razer Barracuda Pro and its very capable drivers, I'm starting to find myself favor that over the Black Shark V2 Pro because of the convenience to use across multiple platforms and that I could also tune it to sound close to my HD600 when I want to listen to music wirelessly. As far for my mobile gaming needs, I will sometimes bring and use the Barracuda Pros, but most of the time, I would prefer something that will easily fit in my pocket like the Hammerhead True Wireless Pro. But no matter which one you decide to pick up, each one of these Razer's flagship wireless gaming headsets can be fine-tuned with Razer's software equalizer to match your listening preferences, so I personally think you should choose the one based on the platform that you will be mainly gaming on. Although, from my experience, the Razer Barracuda Pros have the best overall and balanced sounding drivers that are also the most sensitive to tuning. So if you want the best quality and the most balanced sound, the Barracuda Pros can be a great candidate. What do you guys think? Let me know which one you'll be picking up. All right, hope you guys find today's video helpful and thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button as it will help this channel a lot more than you know it. And I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao.